Hey everybody, continuing on our tests of MacBook M1 versus MacBook Intel. Also in this video, I'm gonna be doing a giveaway. Stay till the end to find out what it is and how to enter. What are we doing today? Today we're testing the Mandelbrot test. The heck is a Mandelbrot? I'll get to that in a second. We're also doing it in Python. So we're running the Mandelbrot algorithm and that's basically generating these crazy fractal patterns. So it's a very intense algorithm that's gonna take up all the CPUs and max them all out on the machine. And we're doing this using Python. And if you wanna do this test yourself, it's available in multiple different languages. In fact, you might've already been familiar with some of my tests I've been doing here and other languages like JavaScript, C++, C Sharp, Java, Ruby, and so on. If you wanna run this yourself, go to Benchmarks Game, just Google for it, and you'll find this website. Mandelbrot is located here. It's one of the available algorithms. There's a bunch of algorithms to pick from, and this one happens to keep the processor super busy. So let's find it. The one I want is Python 3, number seven. Let's click on that. They give you the source code. These are all contributed by people like you and me, but much smarter than me, at least. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna copy this code right here, which is the Python code. And right now I'm on my Intel MacBook Pro. By the way, this machine is a Core i9. It's a $4,000 machine, bought it at the end of 2019. And this is the new MacBook Air M1. And for those that like spoilers, for those that don't like spoilers, cover your ears. For those that do like spoilers, the M1 does beat out the i9 in this particular test. It doesn't do that for all the tests that I've been doing using Mandelbrot, but for this particular test, it is going to win. So I'm going to copy this code and uh, paste it in an editor here, save that as mandel.py, and we're about to run it. What are the tests that I'm going to do today? There's a few things. First, I'm going to run it on Apple architecture. So ARM architecture using Apple Silicon, utilizing all the processors. I'm going to see how long that takes. I'm also going to run it on the Intel machine unplugged. And the reason I say that is because when you plug in the Intel machine, in some cases, it's actually going to help not throttle the machine. So we're going to see if that that helps it out being plugged in. So I'm gonna do another iteration with it plugged in. And also at the end, I wanna check out to see how running a Rosetta emulation mode and this program in Rosetta emulation mode is going to affect the timing of this script on the M1. So we've got a bunch of different tests to do. And in the meantime, while all these tests are happening, we're gonna also take a look at the battery drainage and the temperature of these machines as they spin up. So just to give us a little baseline here, I'm starting off the MacBook Pro at 99% and the MacBook Air is at 78%. So we'll see how far down it goes. All right, I've got the code here on the Intel box. And uh, if you scroll all the way down below the source code, it tells you how to run this. So I'm gonna copy that piece of code right there, the uh, command, and let's do the time command. This will tell us the time at the end, how long this execution took. I'll paste in the command that I copied, and we just need to change this to mandel.py. And 16,000 is the parameter that to pass in. It's a good number because it doesn't take too long, but it takes a significant amount of time, so a couple of minutes. And I've played around with this parameter as well. 16,000, the one they recommend is a good number. I'm gonna do the exact same thing to set up my M1 process and I'm gonna run the regular terminal. And I'll show you in a bit what I mean by Rosetta terminal. If you're not familiar with how to do it, I've done it before on this channel, but you can specifically open the terminal using Rosetta emulation. All right, so I've got my command set up on both of these machines. Let's kick things off, shall we? I'm gonna press enter at the same time, boom. And it's gonna kick things off. Now, you might hear beeping. That's the printing of the fractal pattern in ASCII code being written out to the console. And that, yes, that does take a little bit of a performance performance hit, but that's how this particular algorithm and this particular program, not the algorithm, the program is designed, is to print this out immediately. All right, I'm hearing the fans now on the Intel box, not on the MacBook Air, no fans there. We are getting a little bit of a temperature boost on both of these machines, but the Intel box feels a lot hotter to the touch. I got a little thermometer, let's check it out. So we're at 44 degrees right now on the Intel box. 32 degrees on the M1. We'll check that in a bit. All right, guess what? We've got a winner. The M1 is done at one minute and three seconds. So I'm gonna jot that down and we'll do some averages later on. The Intel box is also done at one minute and 20 seconds. So the $4,000 machine finishes 17 seconds after the $1,200 machine. Okay, 
I think this is worth another run just to make sure. So I'm gonna run the exact same command one more time. And by the way, if you do see some other tests in languages or algorithms that you want me to run, let me know in the comments down below. And if you happen to run some of these examples on your hardware, also let me know. And other people might benefit from this as well. Just put in the comment what hardware you're using, the algorithm you ran, the language, and the time it took. This feels like a sci-fi movie with all this beeping going on. I feel like I'm in a spaceship. All right, we've got a result from the M1, which won again, one minute and five seconds this time. So a slowdown of two seconds, not bad. One minute and 21 seconds from our trusty old Intel box. And the temperature of this one is at 44 still. This one went up to 35. So I think we have enough information and a pretty consistent time for both of these machines that we can move on to the next test, which is going to be running the Intel box plugged in. So we'll see if there's a difference with that. And I'm gonna execute this code in Rosetta emulation mode on the M1. So we just finished the test running on ARM architecture, and now we're gonna use Intel architecture on the M1 to do the same test. And I'm gonna show you activity monitor in a second. By the way, if you're not familiar with how to run the terminal in Intel emulation mode, under Rosetta, this is how you do it. You go to applications and you find utilities because that's where the terminal is. You find the terminal program, which is native. It's gonna be the ARM version. You make a copy of that. So you duplicate it. And then I like to rename it. So I named it Rosy term for Rosetta, just so that I know. The most important thing to do here is to get info and then make sure you put a checkbox in open with Rosetta. That way this instance of the terminal runs under Rosetta. It forces it to run under Rosetta. And that's what I have open here. So let's go ahead and run that. And I'm gonna do the same thing on my Intel box just plugged in. Got both of these set up and let's go. And there they go, folks. So let's take a look at the activity monitor to see what is being utilized and how much. On the CPU tab, we're gonna sort by CPU usage. And there it is, Python, eight of those. They're all being pretty filled up and um, looks like Python is executing under Apple architecture, no matter if you use Rosetta terminal or the regular native terminal. That's interesting. I did not know that. In my other tests, like for example, Ruby, this was an Intel architecture execution. So Python appears to be Apple only. Good to know. So I'm expecting this result to be pretty much the same. Let's measure the temperature while this is running. We've got 43 on the Intel box and 36 on the M1. So the M1 temperature is slowly creeping up. The Intel temperature is pretty steady. And yeah, 109 is the result on the M1. It's still faster than the Intel box but it's not as slow as I expected it to be running under Rosetta because it's not running under Rosetta. I like to find these things out live while I'm recording the video and that way we get to explore this uh, together. The plugged in Intel box though did a couple of seconds better. So 118 we got as a result as opposed to 120 from before. So apparently having the Intel box plugged in shaves off a couple of seconds which may or may not be contributed to by having it plugged in. If you like this kind of test and you found it interesting i'd appreciate a thumbs up for the video it really helps me out and if you did not like it let me know in the comments what could be improved if you want to see more tests like this do subscribe to the channel and if you've stuck around this far you're probably curious about the giveaway i'm giving away a license of jet brains thanks to jet brains for giving away the licenses to you folks this video is not sponsored but they were kind enough to give some licenses to me so i can pass them on to you so to enter just make sure you leave a comment down below and i will randomly pick one of your comments i'll check to see if you're a subscriber to the channel channel of course and uh, I'll announce it on this channel don't miss it thank you so much for watching the video and I will see you all next time